I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. This is a nice antique, uh, I'm calling it a Welsh dresser, I've been calling it that, but uh, it's not really a dresser. A dresser refers to a sideboard where you'd have a surface to, to serve food from. And this is just like a Welsh dresser except it doesn't have the, the sideboard, doesn't have the main board. I'm going to call it a Welsh cupboard. And it's, I think it's made of elm, and it's actually in pretty good shape. It's got, the main thing that's wrong with it is the two end moldings. This molding especially is broken, and so is the other one. And it also has some minor stuff in it. It's got some water damage to the feet, and, uh, and actually there's something dripped uh, all along this base, and uh, we'll have to get that off. And then there's a couple of other things here and there that need to be glued. All right, I had a neighbor help me take the case off of the stand. And uh, the first thing I want to do is see if I can get this molding off of here. So, I'm doing one area at a time, trying to heat it up very carefully. I'm watching very closely to make sure that uh, I don't see anything happening here. I don't want any scorching or anything. And then uh, I do it for two minutes, and then I try prying it with a scraper. Now you can see where someone uh, added this board here to help support the molding. Uh, not a bad idea. Actually, that seems pretty sturdy. This side is quite sturdy. I think I'll just uh, Im improve these touch-ups. Uh, fill this area in, fill that in, and, and uh, touch up a little bit right here. It's easy to see that these aren't original nails. Well, I don't think anyone will be surprised that this is a really lousy glue joint. Uh, really kind of non-existent. So I'm going to uh, epoxy this back together. And I think I'm also going to get some oak veneer and use it as a backer. I think I'll put a block here so I can use that to position these in the exact alignment. This block is covered by clear packing tape. You know, I'm going to put a block here too to give me something to clamp against.
you can see that as I put the squeeze on it, these pieces want to come up. I've got a big dowel here. I can use this to hold it down. I will uh, cover it in plastic. I need to have an idea of where this should be. I won't be able to see if it's together when I have put that block on it. Now I'm going to color the epoxy. This piece I noticed from the beginning is very dark and I don't think it's dark because I put the heat gun on it. It was always dark. Yeah, that's the color of the rest of the cabinet. Okay, I've got two-part epoxy, a thickening agent, powder stains, soluble in alcohol, and I have alcohol for cleanup and a paper towel. Well, it's going to be interesting to uh, see what this looks like tomorrow. All right, let's see what we got here. <laughs> no surprises there. There we go. Boy, seems good and strong too. All right, I'll try to uh, chip off some of this excess epoxy uh, with a chisel. Ultimately, it's going to need to be sanded. Epoxy's tough to get off. And I need to fill all the gaps with uh, epoxy putty. This is a nice scraper set I bought with changeable blades. Maybe this will help me with this big cove molding. Now I'll fill these gaps with epoxy putty. Uh, people like to call this Tootsie Roll putty. Now epoxy putty is very difficult to sand when it's fully hardened. So I set the timer for five minutes. I'll get some water and I'll dip my blade in water, maybe even a scraper blade, and try to carefully remove as much of the excess as I can. I don't know why water works so well with this stuff, but it does. Okay, while I'm waiting for that uh, epoxy putty to fully dry, I need to trim this piece of veneer I put on the back. I've sanded the back of this, uh, trying to flatten it till the veneer is almost gone. But it's still doing its job. But I need to try it on here to see how it's fitting. So I need to uh, get these nails out and prepare that surface. Just what I thought. There's, there's two things happening here. I mean, this, the back of this is not completely flat. 
it's, it's cupped a little bit this way. And then this end grain sticks out a little bit past here, so you got quite a rocking motion here. I'm going to try to take a little bit more off the back of this, and then I may just have to add, keep it flat against the cabinet here, but add some wedges along the top here to give it some support. Boy, taking that off the back of this molding has really helped a lot. I don't think I should take off any more. It's it's rocking on this end grain right here. I've got to I've got to really take away some right here. Boy, this is. Uh, this is fitting so much better now. Still open here at the top, but I think that that's as far as I can go with that. I think I'm going to uh, glue and nail this here in this position so that this is flat against the cabinet. And I'm going to add a wedge piece in the top here for support that will also fill this gap. All right, I've sanded this. Uh uh, really well with 100 and then 150 and I'm, uh, I'm anxious to see what the color's like. I'll, uh, I'll put some alcohol on it. color's perfect. I'm going to give it a coat of this, uh, this old-fashioned varnish and then tomorrow I'll do the touch-ups. Doing it before, uh, before I install it. Okay, this is dried overnight. I'm going to go over it with a uh, gray ultra fine pad and do the touch ups. I'm using a brush tip marker. Okay, this will need uh, another coat, but because it would have to dry overnight, I'm going to. Uh, install this on the cabinet first. I've still got a little bit of this problem up here. I'm going to nail this to the carcass. That's the way it was originally done. I'm going to use a little bit of glue in this area here where it joins this piece of molding. And really just the lower part here. I'll nail across here. Then I can make a wedge to fit in here to give it some support at the top. I put some double stick tape on this block just to help me hold it in place while I nail it. The hide glue is just going on this front part here. Well that seems uh, pretty well secured just like that, but I still want to put a wedge behind this upper portion. I'll glue it in with a little hide glue. So this will just give this a little extra support back here. Because the grain of the piece of molding, this block, and my wedge are all going in the same direction, uh, I feel okay gluing it in there. Now I still have to make a wedge for this front part here. I have a piece of uh, white oak that very similar to this wood here, and so I'll uh, make it out of that. So now to the other side. Uh, this molding has also been broken in the past, but it, it's really strong, uh, but definitely uh, needs some touch-ups. I don't know what happened there, and there's a hole. Who knows? I'm going to use epoxy putty on this, but because it's on a corner like this, on an outside edge, first I'm going to poke some holes in it to help anchor the putty. Then a little bit of water on the knife, a little water on the thing, my finger, and then after about five or six minutes I take a gray pad and you can gently remove a lot of the excess here. 
Well, now we can turn our attention to the base. And uh, it's kind of odd. The base has drip marks all over it, uh, water damage to the feet, it looks like. And it's odd because there's no drip marks on the, uh, on the case above it. So maybe they were in separate locations and something happened. But uh, I'm going to take some uh, scratch cover and steel wool and go over this and see if it helps. It looks great with the uh, scratch cover you know, and the steel wool to help clean off the surface. Uh, but you never know if it's going to stay that way or not. And so I'll go over the whole thing with the scratch cover and uh, scrub it down and let it dry overnight. We'll see you tomorrow. Most of the drip marks seem to disappear, except in this area and this area. Uh, I got a, I happen to have some 2 watt, so it's not quite as fine, and uh, I'll get a fresh piece and go at these two areas again. Well, I decided to try one more thing. I'm going to use a uh, maroon pad, which is a medium pad. And that seems to be doing the trick. All right, this is dried overnight. I've got to trim this patch down, this little wedge. But first I'll, um, on the other end, the piece of molding that had all the cracks in it, I've got to touch that up. Yeah, that putty smoothed out really well. I did sand this with a little bit of 150. And uh, these areas are so large, I'm going to go over them with some uh, dark walnut dye stain that's been really uh, thinned out quite a bit. gap right there. I put some putty in. Uh, while that's drying, I'll go back to the other end. Well, there's a, a kind of a big crack here. I think I'll use uh, the low heat burning sticks, the wax sticks, to fill some of that in. I'm going to wipe off this excess and see what the color looks like before I go any further. It's a little light. Maybe I'll try the dark walnut. Yeah, I think it's going to look better. I'm going to use a little bit of a perfect brown dye stain, really thinned out. I don't think it'll take much to uh, do this end grain. Okay, this is the side that was broken so badly. I, kept, I keep looking at it wondering if it needs more color or not, but I think what I'm going to do on both end moldings is uh, pat them with a little satin varnish. And I think the color will be fine. This is the same uh, type of varnish I used before, just the satin version. And I'm not going to brush it on, I'm just going to pat a little bit on, sort of seal everything in. Same thing on the other end. Alright, while well, everything's drying on the Covered, I'll go back to the base, and yeah, I can still see shadows of some of these vertical lines, uh, but I am just not going to worry about it. I'm not going to sand this down. Uh, 
I'm just going to polish this up with the uh, Howard's Feed and Wax, which is uh, orange oil and beeswax. And I think it's going to be fine. Well, there you have it. This really beautiful, uh, what I call a uh, Welsh cupboard. It's very old. I think it's made of elm. The only thing it uh, came in for really was these, uh, this end especially, the two end moldings were damaged. This one very badly. And then of course I found other odds and ends to uh, repair and touch up along the way. And yeah, it, it, it looks pretty good. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please subscribe and like, and be sure to hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified when I put out a new video.